Hi friends, well, welcome to episode two of Cozy and Magical Autumn. I'm so excited to be here today and to be chatting more about books. Who would have guessed that I would have brought book content to my channel? It makes me so happy. If you are new here, hi, I'm Sam. I create Disney lifestyle and apparently not book content and YouTube has been my passion for the last over 10 years. And so I really just, I do it for fun. And so I'm so happy that you are here with me today. Today I wanted to talk about some of the books that I'm super excited to read this fall. Now I am new to the whole reading thing. So some of these books you guys have probably heard of, hopefully you haven't heard of some of them and you find a new good read for the fall time. And so I went ahead and narrowed my list down to 13, but these are all in my want to read and in my cozy spooky season uh bookshelf on goodreads so if you guys did want to go check that out i will leave that down below so i went ahead and broke them down into three different categories by cozy just like like i've kind of been doing my research of like cozier books to read during the fall from what i've heard it just sounds super super cozy um the second category is going to be romance of course and then the last one is going to be thrillers and mysteries so i've actually been saving my thrillers and mysteries that i've bought i literally have a stack of mostly just thrillers and mysteries next to me i've been saving them for august september and october to get me into the spooky season vibes without further ado let's go ahead and get into it grab a cozy drink curl up and let's talk books <laughs> a lot of these books so I am just going to be putting an image up on the screen so I'm going to either be listening to these books or physically reading them but I do have a stack of some of the ones that I've bought already but I'm trying to read through them first before buying the rest of them it's kind of my TBR my to be read <laughs> so the first book on my list is called curse of the day and it's by Annabelle Chase I think I found this book in a book recommendation video for fall books but once it was described as like Halloween Town vibes. I even saw a review that said it gives you like Saturday morning cartoon vibes. I was 100% in. Like that is so my vibe for just a lighthearted, spooky season type of read. The description says, Welcome to Spellbound, where paranormal is the new normal. The only magic Emma Hart believes in is caffeine and the power of the dryer to lose one sock per load. A public interest lawyer buried in a mound of student debt, Emma's whole life has been one turn of bad luck after another. Her streak seems to continue when she gets lost on the way to see a client in the remote Pocono Mountains. And honestly, I haven't read the synopsis for a lot of these books, so we're going to be reading this together. A chance encounter with a suicidal angel lands her in Spellbound, a town where supernaturals have have been cursed to remain for centuries but probably not the best time for Emma to discover that she's actually a witch. Between the recent murder of the town's public defender, a goblin accused of theft, remedial witch classes, and attention of one smoking hot vampire, Emma struggles to navigate this unfamiliar terrain without losing her mind or her life. Curse of the Day is the first book in the Spellbound Paranormal Cozy Mystery series. This is a full-length, humorous, paranormal, cozy mystery novel. Doesn't that just sound adorable? Like, I'm so excited to read that one. If you guys have read any of these books, please let me know down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Or if you have any other recommendations, please, please, please leave them down below. So the next book is The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. So this was also in one of those cozy fall read videos that I was watching and I actually started listening to it today and by the way I did not realize that you could virtually rent ebooks from your local library so I just recently got a library card and downloaded like three audiobooks for free I've been so used to using audible non-stop but like oh my gosh if you are on a budget and you want to listen to audiobooks or give audiobooks a shot definitely check out your local library and just like see if you can sign up online and see if they have an app or a website where you can listen to their audiobooks. It's incredible and life-changing. <laughs> anyway, I just started this book actually this morning. I started listening to it and another book that I believe is also on this list. They're two totally different vibes, which is why I started the two. The intro was just so cute. She talks about like the best places to read like a book because it's just like such an experience and it was so cute and I just like 
I fell in love like listening to the intro and I started listening to the story and it just seems so cozy and so cute. Really enjoying it so far. I'm not super far. I think I'm on like chapter four or something. So the description says, Nina Redmond is a literary matchmaker. Pairing a reader with that perfect book is her passion and also her job, or at least it was, until yesterday. She was a librarian in a hectic city, but now the job she loved is no more. Determined to make a new life for herself, Nina moves to a sleepy village many miles away. There she buys a van, transforms it into a bookmobile, a mobile bookshop that she drives from neighborhood to neighborhood, changing one life after another with the power of storytelling. From helping her grumpy landlord deliver a lamb to sharing picnics with a charming train conductor who serenades her with poetry, Nina discovers there's plenty adventure, magic, and soul in a place that's beginning to feel like home. A place where she just might be able to write her own happy ending. Come on, come on. And so she ends up moving to Scotland and so far it just seems like super, super cute. Also, I believe I got most of these recommendations from, um, I think her name is Darling Desi on YouTube. I'm new to the whole like booktuber thing. That's another thing. If anyone has any booktubers that they recommend, please let me know down below. So I think I got a lot of these recommendations from her. I've just been like on it like, over the last like few months. I've just been like writing down every single book that I come across that sounds interesting. So definitely check her out. Yeah, it just sounds totally adventurous, but in a super cozy, quaint way. And I just, I love the setting and I don't know, it just seems super cute so far, especially as someone who's just getting into books and has always loved the aesthetic of books. I think it's great. So the last one on my cozy list is The Scandalous Sisterhood of Prick Willow Place by by Julie Berry. This just sounded very adorable and very sisterly and I just, I liked the vibes. There's a murder on the loose, but that doesn't stop the girls at St. Etheldrida's. Etheldrida's? I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong. I feel like there's a better way to say this and I feel like I'm just missing it, I'm sorry. Um, from attempting to hide at the death of their headmaster in this rollicking farce, the students of the School for Girls face a bothersome dilemma. Their irascible headmistress, Mrs. Plackett, and her Shirley brother, Mr. Godding, have been most inconveniently poisoned at Sunday dinner. Now the school will most certainly be closed and the girls sent home, unless these seven very proper young ladies can hide the murders and convince their neighbors that nothing is wrong. The scandalous sisterhood of Prick Willow Place is a smart, hilarious Victorian romp full of outrageous plot twists, mistaken identities, and mysterious happenings. Sounds cute, right? Moving on, on to romance. <laughs> For romance, I actually only have two books written on here. Now on my list, of actual books that I want to read like my big list I just narrowed it down to 13 I went with 13 because 13 is kind of a spooky number you know what I mean there's like way more on there but these were the two that I was like the most excited about one I feel like you've heard of and one you may have not okay so I know this first one is really popular and it is love in other words by Christina Lauren I've heard so many good things I've heard I've, like this book gets so overhyped that I'm beyond excited to read it the story of the heart can never be unwritten Macy Sorensen is settling into an ambitious, if emotionally tepid routine. Work hard as a new pediatrics resident, plan her wedding to an older, financially secure man, keep her head down and heart tucked away. But when she runs into Ellie Petropoulos, I hope I'm saying that right, the first and only love of her life, the careful bubble she constructed begins to dissolve. Once upon a time, Elliot was Macy's entire world. Growing from her gangly bookish friend into the man who coaxed her heart open again after the loss of her mother, only to break it the very night he declared his love for her. Told in altering timelines between then and now, teenage Elliot and Macy grow from friends to much more. Spending weekends and lazy summers together in a house outside of San Francisco, devouring books, sharing favorite words, and talking through their growing pains and triumphs. As adults, they become strangers to one another until their chance reunion. Although their memories are obscured by the agony of what happened that night so many years ago, Elliot will come to understand the truth behind Macy's decade-long silence and will have to overcome the past and himself to revive her faith in the possibility of an all-consuming love. Wow. That sounds like an emotional roller coaster. I'm ready to get on. Just strap me in. I'm ready. <laughs> no, but seriously, I've heard so, so, so many good things about this book. If you've read it already, let me know what you think. Okay, so this next book, I genuinely love the cover of. I just think it is so cute. And that is Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. Like, look at this cover. Is this not like super, super like spooky season slash 
Valentine's Day, but spooky season. The reviews on this seem pretty good. The first, the very first one that I see is this book made me laugh all the laughter, which like makes me so excited and so ready. Turns out that reading nothing but true crime isn't exactly conductive to modern dating. And one woman is gonna have to learn to give love a chance when she's used to suspecting the worst. PhD candidate Phoebe Walsh has always been obsessed with true crime. She's even analyzing the genre in her dissertation if she can manage to finish writing it. It's hard to find the time when she spends the summer in Florida cleaning out her childhood home, which by the way, I live in Florida, so like, it's close to home, you know? Dealing with her obnoxiously good-natured younger brother and grappling with the complicated feelings of mourning a father she hadn't had a relationship with for years. It doesn't help that she's low-key convinced that her new neighbor, Sam Dennings, is a serial killer. He may dress business casual by day, but at night, he's clearly up to something. It's not long before Phoebe realizes Sam might be something much scarier, a genuinely nice guy who can pierce her armor to reach her vulnerable heart. I don't know y'all. That sounds like a little bit like, it just sounds interesting. I'm very, very intrigued by the story and I'm very intrigued by the character and just the plot and I don't know, I feel like it's gonna be a fun ride. I guess we'll find out. Okay, finally, on to the mysteries and thrillers. So the very first one on my list because I'm going to be reading it next as for physical books. Right now I'm currently reading two other physical books right now. I'm trying to get through them first. I'm listening to two. I'm listening to two and I'm physically reading two. So I currently have four on my plate right now. But this one will be my next one and that is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Now I have seen mixed reviews for this book but I think it's gonna be phenomenal at least it's what i'm hoping and i'm actually reading this for my book club which i joined because yes i'm a reader now and readers join book clubs <laughs> shout out to the wormies we actually picked this book as our first pick and I, and I also just love the look of it like i know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover but i do like it casey fletcher a recently widowed actress trying to escape a bad streak of press has retreated to the peace and quiet of her family's lake house in vermont Armed with a pair of binoculars and several bottles of bourbon, she passes the time watching Tom and Catherine Royce, the glamorous couple living in the house across the lake. They make for good viewing. A tech innovator, Tom is powerful, and a former model, Catherine is gorgeous. One day on the lake, Casey saves Catherine from drowning, and these two strike up a budding friendship. But the more they get to know each other and longer Casey watches, the more it becomes clear that Catherine and Tom's marriage isn't as perfect as it appears. <laughs> when Catherine suddenly vanishes, Casey immediately suspects Tom of foul play. What she doesn't realize is that there's more to the story than meets the eye, and that the shocking secrets can lurk beneath the most placid of surfaces. Patched with sharp characters, psychological suspense, and gasp-worthy plot twists, Riley Sager's a house, The House Across the Lake is the ultimate escapist read no lake house required it sounds super thrilling i'm also like super new to thrillers the closest thing that i read to a thriller was more of like a mystery which was the inheritance games um if you haven't read that book you definitely should but i'll talk about that in a sec this just sounds so interesting and then <laughs> And then the, the we didn't even realize when we bought it some of us in the uh, book club are big Taylor Swift fans and it literally has a line from no body no crime by Taylor Swift it says I think he did it but I just can't prove it is that not perfect it, is that not perfect I figured like I took that as a big old sign that I'm get, probably gonna love this book I feel like that song literally fits the plot to this and it's funny because it was already i was like listening to it a lot prior to buying the book that specific song i don't know why not sure i just like randomly added it to my playlist so when i read that i freaked out and it was just such a coincidence but i'm very very excited to read this and i already know that i'm gonna fly through it I'm ready. Speaking of the inheritance games, I'm actually going to be reading the second book, um, The Hawthorne Legacy. So if you have not read the first book, basically it is about a very wealthy family and the grandfather who holds all the wealth, who was like a multi-billionaire in Texas, passes away and leaves all of his fortune to a teenage girl. And But she has to live in the house with the family for the next year in order to fully get it. It's very intriguing, very interesting. It gets compared to the movie Knives Out a lot, which I totally get. And I think that some of the books that I'm gonna be reading during the fall also have a similar plot line, which I love. Like, I love that kind of stuff. So it's perfect. So I did get the second one. And the third one, The Final Gambit, I think actually comes out this month. 
I haven't read the back yet. I don't want to read the back of this if you haven't read the first one um, yet, so I don't want to like ruin it, but I don't, even though I don't think that there's anything on the back that would really give away anything in the plot in the first one, but basically the main character is just trying to figure things out, and so I'm really, really thrilled to read the second one. Oh, and this is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and then I will be reading the third one as well whenever it comes out. However, I'm like figuring out that like the whole hardcover and paperback situation um, because when I went to go buy this at Barnes & Noble like a month ago they only had hardcovers and I had to pre-order the paperback and I know that the new book is coming out so it's gonna be hardcover I didn't know any of that like that is how new I am to this whole thing so um, I'm probably gonna listen to the last one I would think or like rent it and then buy the paperback whenever that comes up eventually to have for my collection so the next book I don't physically have but it just sounds thrilling. So this next one is called Bunny by Mona Awad. My friend rated it four stars and then just wrote, huh, as her review. This one's supposed to be just like super messes with your brain type of book. And I'm just like curious. Like I'm really just excited to try different things. I wanna read like thrillers and mystery and suspense, but I'm not really super into like gory or like horror. So hopefully none of these books are too bad, which I don't think that they are. But if you guys are going to leave any books in the comments, please feel free to, but just know that like, not really into like the super terrifying to where like, I'm gonna have nightmares type of books. Samantha, Heather Mackey, couldn't be more of an outsider in her small, highly selective MFA program at New England's Warren University. A scholarship student who prefers the company of her dark imagination, to that of most people, she is utterly repelled by the rest of her fiction writing cohort. 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 Why do I feel like I'm, I'm, I can't speak today. A clique of unbearably twee rich girls who call each other bunny and seem to move and speak as one. But everything changes when Samantha receives an invitation to the bunny's fabled smut salon and finds herself inexplicably drawn to their front door, ditching her only friend Ava in the process. Girl, what you doing? As Samantha plunges deeper and deeper into Bunny's sinister yet sasharine world, beginning to take part in their ritualistic off-campus workshop where they conjure their monstrous creations, the edges of reality begin to blur. Soon, her friendships with Ava and the Bunnies will be brought into deadly collision. The spellbinding new novel from one of the most fearless chroniclers of the female experience, Bunny is a down-the-rabbit-hole tale of loneliness and belonging, friendship and desire, and the fantastic and terrible power of the imagination. Whoa. Apparently, this book is going to be like a trip. From the sounds of it, it's going to be very psychological and very all over the place. The next book is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I actually just got this in the mail today. So this was one of the book of the month club selections. I was the most drawn to this one given the plot. So it says, after years of avoiding one another, Daisy Darker's entire family is assembling for Nana's 18th birthday. 18th. 18th. Really? Really, Sam? Really? After five years of avoiding one another, Daisy Darker's entire family is assembling for Nana's 80th birthday party in Nana's crumbling gothic house on a tiny tidal island. They're finally back together one last time, and when the tide comes, they will be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours. The family arrives, each of them harboning secrets. Then, at the stroke of midnight, as a storm rages, Nana is found dead. An hour later, the next family member follows. Trapped on an island where someone is killing them one by one, the Darkers must reckon with their present mystery as well as their past secrets before the tag goes out and all is revealed. With a wicked wink to Agatha Christie's and then there were none, Daisy Darker's unforgettable twist will leave readers reeling. I don't know, she sounds pretty, pretty interesting. I think that this book is gonna keep me on my toes. I'm very, very excited to get to it. Okay, now the next book is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I have not yet read a Colleen Hoover book because whenever I would like pick up the books and read the synopsis, it just sounded like it was gonna be so sad, like any of the books, and I just like wasn't in the mood to read something sad. So what are your favorite Colleen Hoover books? I wanna know because I am gonna give her a chance. I feel like I need to, and I'm gonna start with Verity because I've just heard excellent things about it, and it just sounds perfect for uh, spooky season. And I accidentally stumbled upon a pre-order available collector's edition of the book so i ordered that that won't get here until like the beginning of october 
clearly I have a lot of other books to read in the meantime, so I am going to be reading that. Bowen Ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts a job offer of a lifetime. Jeremy Crawford, husband of best-selling author Verity Crawford, has hired Lowen to complete the remaining books in a successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. Lowen arrives at the Crawford home, ready to sort through years of Verity's notes and outlines, hoping to find enough material to get her started. What Lowen doesn't expect to uncover in this chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Ooh, spooky. Page after page of bone-chilling admission, including Verity's recollection of what happened to her the day her daughter died. Lowen decides to keep the manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing its contents would devastate the already grieving father. But as Lowen's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, oh no, she recognizes all the ways she she could benefit if he were to read his wife's words. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it impossible for him to continue to love her. Oh girl, this sounds like drama. I'm excited. I feel like so far none of the books that I'm going to be reading has that type of vibe. I'm very curious to see how that one's going to play out. The next one, because I have not read it yet, because I'm very, very behind, as you can see, is Lucy Foley's The Guest List. So I will be reading this one and also this one. I have not read either of them yet. I am thrilled and so excited to be reading them. I've heard so many good things about them. I know they are super, super viral right now. But my only thing is, this cover looks oddly a lot like this one, right? And they're both families gathered with murderers on an island. I'm surprised I haven't seen anyone else post about that or like talk about that so far, but maybe they haven't, I just haven't seen it. But like the covers look similar. The vibe sounds similar, just different characters. I don't know. Anyway, so this one says, it's the wedding of the year, but someone won't survive it. On a remote island off the coast of Ireland, which I love, like I love like the setting, it just sounds incredible. Guests gather to celebrate the wedding of Jules Keegan and Will Slater. Will is a rising television star, handsome and charming. Jules is a smart ambition magazine publisher. Though the sea is a little choppy and the self-service spotty, their wedding is everything you'd expect a young power couple, designer dress, four-tiered cake, boutique whiskey, vintage champagne, every detail has been curated to perfection. All that's left to orchestrate is the happiness, but perfection is for plans and people are all too human. It's not long after the cake is cut and the champagne popped that resentments and petty jealousies come out. Worse yet, the latest parameter reading shows the weather has shifted from fair to changeable and dark clouds are looming overhead. Everyone on the island has a secret, everyone has a motive, and someone won't leave the wedding alive. I just know that I'm going to be flying through these, so I'm so excited to read them. Like, I, I'm i just trying to fly through my current reads right now so I can get started on these. This sounds so interesting. This one also sounds super interesting, so this is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. Jess needs a fresh start. She's broke and alone, and she just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. Her half-brother, Ben, didn't sound thrilled when she asked if she could crash with him for a bit, but he didn't say no. Surely everything will look better from Paris. Only when she shows up to find a very nice apartment, could Ben really have afforded this? He's not there. The longer Ben stays missing, the more Jess starts to dig into her brother's situation, the more questions she has. Ben's neighbors are an electric bunch, but not particularly friendly. Jess may have come to Paris to escape her past, but it's starting to look like it's Ben's future that's in doubt. Everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. Also, can we talk about this cover? It's beautiful. It's like, I love the, ugh, I just love the pink. And then the very last book on this list um, that I actually started today is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So this one definitely has a dark academia vibe. Um, I just started it today. It sounds very, very interesting. I know a lot of books get compared to this one in particular. So it says, under the influence of their charismatic classic professor, a group of clever, eccentric misfits at an elite New England college discover a way of thinking and living that is a world away from the humdrum existence of their contemporaries. But when they go beyond the boundaries of normal morality, they slip gradually from obsession to corruption and betrayal, and at last, inexorably, into evil. That's a lot deeper than I thought it was gonna be. I did not read the description at all when I started it. I thought that I had an idea of it, but that's just like, I feel like steered it in another direction for me. So that is my list. Um, like I said, if you have any recommendations, please, please, please feel free to leave them down below and feel free to add me on Goodreads. And if you guys like book content, be sure to let me know um, if there's anything particular that you wanna see. If you want me to do a reading vlog, maybe we read a book together. Maybe we just go 
shop for books or I don't know I, I'm just really enjoying it and it's obviously a new hobby a new obsession of mine and it's been very very enjoyable thank you so 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 much for watching if you liked this video please let me know down below please consider subscribing it would mean a lot to me and be sure to stay tuned for next Sunday for another episode of cozy and magical autumn and until next time boopity boppity bye